Okay, so today we're going to start chapter 11. In section 1, we're going to learn about circumference and arc length. So first thing we're going to do is arc length. So, no, I'm sorry, circumference. First thing we're going to do is circumference. So the circumference of a circle is the distance all around the circle. The circumference of a circle can either be found by multiplying pi times the diameter, or if they give you a radius, you'll multiply 2 times pi times the radius. Everyone realize that you can turn a diameter into a radius by dividing it by 2, or you could turn a radius into a diameter by multiplying it by 2. Either way, but there's two formulas you can memorize. Okay, so it doesn't matter the order you multiply. So if on this formula here, if you'd rather multiply the radius times 2 and then put pi, you can do that. Because on the questions where it's going to ask you to leave it in terms of pi, they're going to put the 2 times r first and then pi at the end. So when it says leave in terms of pi, generally they're going to write pi last. And that's how I'm going to write my answers. Pretty good on the slide. Next. Next is the arc length. So an arc length is the portion of the circumference of a circle. You can use the measure of the arc to find its length. So the length of the arc is now going to be in linear units. So like inches, centimeters, meters, things like that. The arc length corollary states that in a circle, the ratio of the length of the given arc to the circumference is equal to the ratio of the measure of the arc to 360. Now, I'm going to simplify that because not all of our circles are going to have the letters A and B in them. So what we're going to do instead to find the length of the arc, the length of the arc, again, is a portion of the circumference. So what you're going to do is you're going to take the measure of the arc, which will be in degrees, divided by 360, and then you multiply it by the circumference. Now, when we multiply it by the circumference, remember, if they give us a radius, then the formula we're going to do is measure of the arc divided by 360 times 2 pi r. But if they give us a diameter, it'll be pi d at the end. So measure of the arc over 360 times pi d. So either way, um, these are going to be the three formulas we're going to be using when we're calculating the length of the arc. Or if they give us the length of the arc, then we'll either be finding a radius or a diameter and we'll be working backwards. So again, the arc length is part of the circumference. So again, if I took a piece of pizza out of a whole pizza pie and I wanted to know how long the crust was, this is what we're measuring is the length of that crust. If I were to take a string, put it along the edge of the crust and then measure that string with a ruler, that would give me my arc length. So again, these are in linear units like inches or feet, or centimeters, or meters, a linear length of measurement. So here's our first example. It's asking us to find the circumference of a circle with a diameter that's five inches long. Now I'm going to do this two ways. I'm going to first leave it in terms of pi, and then I'm going to do it again, but I'm going to use 3.14 for pi. So again, the formulas we're using for circumference is either circumference is equal to pi d or circumference is equal to 2 pi r. Now notice in this problem, they gave us a diameter. So I'm going to be using this formula. So c is equal to pi times 5. So again, left in terms of pi, this is my answer. And this is, um, the units here are inches. Circumference are always whatever the radius or the diameters units are. That's the same units you would put in your circumference answer. Now, if the instructions say use 3.14 for pi, which is what it's going to say on the quiz, is you're going to take circumference is equal to 
3.14 times 5. You'll have to do this by hand. So 3.14 times 5, multiply, two decimal places. So the circumference is going to be 15.70. And these, again, are inches. All right, so this time they've given us the circumference already calculated and they want us to find the radius of the circle. So this time, I'm gonna use this formula. Now, I could still use the other one, get the diameter, and then just divide it by two. Either way, you're gonna get the same answer. But let's go ahead and use circumference is equal to two pi r. They're giving me the circumference, it's 17 pi. I'm gonna rewrite the two pi r. My goal is to find the radius, so I need to get the r all by itself. Notice that 2, that pi, and that r are all being multiplied. So to get r by itself, I'm going to divide both sides by 2 pi. So then now, this cancels. The pi's cancel. So now I'm left with my radius is equal to 17 over 2. If I divide that and make it a decimal, it's 8.5. All right. All right, so next it says to find the diameter of a circle with circumference of 16 feet. So I'm going to use the uh, circumference equals pi d. So this time I'm going to go 16 is equal to pi d. So left in terms of pi, my answer would be 16 over pi. However, notice it says to use your calculator. So same equation, c equals pi d. Can we do 16? Now I'm going to put 16 equals pi d. Still the same thing, 16 divided by pi. So on your calculator, you're gonna hit 16, the division button, and then the pi button. Once you do this, you should be getting, so here, I'm gonna do 16 divided by pi, and you get 5.0929. It says round to the hundreds place, so the nine is gonna look at the two and it's gonna say, I'm staying the same. So my diameter is 5.09. Now it's a word problem. Here it says, a car has a diameter of 28 inches. How many revolutions does the tire make while traveling 500 feet? So if we have our tire here and it's got its diameter of 28, and let's say it's gonna travel 500 feet I wanna know how many times this tire is gonna roll. So the revolution is equivalent to the circumference. So one revolution is equivalent to the circumference. So, but before I do this, notice my units on my problem are different. I need to convert the 500 feet into inches. So I'm gonna multiply that by 12, and it's actually gonna travel 6,000 inches. So in order to solve this problem, I'm going to take the amount that it's traveled, and I'm gonna divide it by the circumference. So the first thing I need to do is calculate the circumference. So circumference, again, the formula is pi d, because they gave me a diameter. So circumference is equal to 28 pi. So if it wanted you to leave it in terms of pi, your answer would be 6,000 over 28 pi. If they want you to approximate this, I'm going to divide 6,000 by 28 pi. And when I do that, I get 28 times pi, so I'm doing 6,000 divided by 87.96, 
And when I divide 6,000 by 87.96, I get 68.2, and it's going to round to the nearest tenth, so 68.20, so about 68 revolutions. Okay, so now it wants us to find the indicated measure. So for part A, it wants us to find the length of PQ, but in part B, it wants us to find the circumference. So to find the length of PQ, so the length of the arc, remember I'm gonna do the measure of the arc over 360 times the circumference formula. Notice in this picture, they're giving me a diameter, so I'm gonna do the pi D formula. So the length of my arc, the, remember this 75, so here's the arc it wants me to find, is PQ. Remember that when you have a central angle, the measure of the arc is the same. So my measure of my arc is 75. And then my diameter is nine. Now, you're gonna be leaving these questions in terms of pi, so all we need to do is simplify this. Now, you could multiply nine times 75, put it over 360, and then you have to reduce it, but I highly recommend you either simplify the 75 over 360 first, or simplify diagonally with the diameter in the 360. And that's how I'm gonna do it first. I'm gonna simplify the nine in the 360, make the nine a one, make the 360 a 40. Now I've got 75 over 40 and then times pi. So I could leave it like this. Now I need to still reduce that more. I can divide them both by five. Five goes into 48 times. Five goes into 75 15 times. So my final answer is 15 pi over eight. So you can't do anything else to that? Nope. Now, if it said to use your calculator and use the pi button, then if it said using your calculator, so this is in terms of pi, this answer here, and this is how you're gonna leave it on the quiz. But if it says using your calculator, then what I would do is 15 pi divided by eight. Answer using your calculator, 15.89. But on the quiz, you're doing it in terms of pi. Wait, so, so again, length of the arc is equal to measure of the arc over 360 and since it's asked me to find circumference, I'm just gonna leave it as a C. I don't need the radius, I don't need the diameter. So let's fill in the numbers we know. Notice this is the length of the arc, it's in meters. So the length of my arc is 60 pi. The measure of the arc I'm gonna use is 270. times C. Now I'm gonna leave this in terms of pi, so I'm gonna simplify my fraction, because I'm not using a calculator. I could cross off the zeros, or essentially divide them both by 10. And now I could simplify the 27 over 36. I can divide them both by nine. So I'm gonna change this to a, nine, a three, and this to a four. Can you guys see that? Let's see, make this a three now and a four. So now I have 60 pi is equal to three fourths C. I now need to divide by three fourths, which really means multiply by the reciprocal. So I'm gonna multiply both sides by four over three. I can put a one there. This simplifies, becomes all ones. Simplify this. And now 20 times four pi is 80 pi is my circumference. Instead, let's do it this way. So here's my original equation. I'm dividing 
So it's 3 4 C is equal to 60 pi. I'm dividing both sides by 3 fourths. Because 3 fourths divided by 3 fourths is C. But now what I need to do is 60 pi divided by 3 fourths. Keep flip change and make it multiply by 4 over 3. I can simplify diagonally, make this a 1, make this a 20, and now 20 pi times 4 is 80 pi. All right, next one. It's the same circle, but now my length of my arc is in a decimal. So we're going to use a calculator for this one. We're still going to do exactly the same. So we're going to do the length of the arc is equal to the measure of the arc divided by 360 and again times C because we're trying to find circumference. So this time I'm using my calculator. So 61.26 is equal to 270 over 360. Now, if you don't want to simplify the fraction since you're using your calculator, you could just multiply by the reciprocal. Now, someone in my other class said, well, can't I just multiply both sides by 360? That'll cancel. And then divide by 270. You can do it that way also. Or you could simplify the fraction down to the 3 fourths like I did on the other problem and reduce it. So let's just do it this way first. So 360 times 61.26, and I get 22053.6 equals 270C, divide by 270, and my circumference equals 81.68, so rounded to the tenths place, 81.7. Now the other way you could have done it is you could have taken your 61.26, again, reduce the fraction down to 3 fourths, multiply by the reciprocal, which is 4 over 3, and you still get the same answer, 81.7, and the units here are meters. All right, this is all for part A. All right, let's do part B now. So this time it wants me to find the radius. So again, I'm gonna do length of the arc is equal to the measure of the arc divided by 360. And because they're asking me to find a radius, I'm gonna put the circumference formula that uses the radius. Now, I could use the pi d, get my answer, and divide by 2 if you want to do it that way also. However, let's go ahead and put in what we know. Yes, fraction, yes. So this is just length of the arc, yes. Um, I could also simplify my fraction by dividing 15 and 36 both by 3 and make it 5 over 12. And let me just do this 5 over 12. Still have the 2 pi r. And then I could also simplify the 2 and the 12 and make that a 1 and make that a 6. So now I have 10.5 is equal to 5, 6 pi r. Now, my goal was to get r by itself, so I need to divide both sides by the 5, 6 pi. So if it's easier, and we're going to use our calculator, so we could just divide both sides by 5, 6 pi, 5, 6 pi, and then this ends up giving me 4.01. Now, if we weren't using our calculator, 10.5 is equal to 5, 6 pi r. I could multiply by the reciprocal. Um, however, if we're giving you decimals, chances are you're going to be using your calculator. 
is what I would do instead of trying to do it like that, I would do this first. I would multiply by the reciprocal. So I would multiply 6 times 10.5, divide by 5, and I would get 12.6 equals pi times radius, because this will cancel. And then now divide 12.6 by pi. I would do it like that step by step. If you wanted to do it step by step at this, this 10.5 equals 5 over 6 pi r. If you want to multiply both sides by 6 first to get rid of the fraction, and then divide by 5 pi, you can do that too. Or divide by 5, then divide by pi. Again, you could do it step by step.